In this lecture, we will derive the exact solution for electrical double layer over a flat plate in an infinite uh, electrolyte media. So, uh, earlier we have derived the solution for concentration and potential in the diffuse layer of the EDL in the low zeta potential limit. That is, uh, we assume that ZE zeta over KT is significantly smaller than 1. Now we relax this assumption and derive the exact uh, solution for the diffuse layer and we are going to again solve the equation for this uh, particular case where we have a flat plate with a negative charge at z equals to 0. So, uh, you can either neglect the stern layer or just assume that uh, the potential uh, next to the stern layer is zeta and we denote uh, this location next to the stern layer as z equals to 0. And we know that the concentration of positive and negative ions is given by the Boltzmann distribution which is And because we are looking at the case where we have negatively charged wall, our potential is negative <coughs> and therefore we have a negative sign when we have, uh, uh, in this expression, when we have the, when we are looking at the concentration of a positive ion and we have a positive sign over here for negatively charged species. And when we substitute this form of the concentration in the Poisson equation, the equation that we get is this equation um, we have derived in the previous lecture. So now we are going to uh, <coughs> solve this uh, equation analytically uh, with the boundary conditions that the potential at z equals to 0 is equal to the zeta potential and as z tends to infinity the potential in the bulk solution is 0 so phi tends to 0 as z tends to infinity. <coughs> Now to solve uh, this equation, let's uh, first introduce dimensionless variables. So we'll introduce uh, a dimensionless potential which we'll denote by phi star uh, as z e phi over kt. Similarly, we'll uh, introduce a dimensionless coordinate z star which is given by z non-dimensionalized by the EDL thickness lambda d and we call that lambda d is given by square root of epsilon kt over 2 z e whole squared c naught times the Avogadro number and c naught is the concentration of the salt in the bulk uh, liquid and we are looking at uh, an electrolyte which is symmetric so z plus and z minus uh, have the same magnitude that is z. Now uh, to solve this uh, equation uh, we have introduced these dimensionless parameters uh, variables and when we introduce these dimensionless variables the equation actually simplifies to del squared phi star so instead of phi, we have phi star and we have z e over k t <coughs> over here and for uh, instead of z, we will have lambda d squared times d z star squared and this is equal to 2 z e n a over epsilon c naught 
sine hyperbolic uh, so we have z e phi over k t and this is exactly phi star so if we substitute this value of the EDL thickness lambda t the characteristic thickness of the EDL uh, lambda t in and this uh, equation uh, we would uh, get we would uh, be able to simplify our final equation to d squared phi star over dz squared is uh, equal to sine hyperbolic sine of phi star so uh, so there's uh, one small mistake so we'll have actually this is inverse yeah so now if we uh, substitute the value of lambda d squared this is the equation that we are going to get now to solve this uh, equation we'll multiply both sides of this equation with uh, d phi star over dz star uh, star so actually uh, let's drop these uh, star signs and uh, we'll uh, write this equation in a simplified form so we are just dropping this star for simplicity so we have this equation and the boundary condition is that phi at z equals to 0 and z is non uh, is in dimensionless and that would be z e zeta over k t and phi tends to 0 as z tends to infinity now to solve this equation we will multiply both sides of this equation by d phi by dz okay and now we will see that this term on the left hand side is actually half of d by dz of d phi by dz whole squared so if we take the derivative of d phi by dz whole squared then uh, you will get uh, uh, we will first get uh, 2 times d phi by dz and divide it by 2 so we will get d phi by dz and then we will have another derivative so we will get d squared phi by dz squared and the right hand side is actually d by dz of cosine hyperbolic phi so uh, what we have is that we will now look at these two terms and these two terms are equal to each other so uh, we can now uh, integrate this equation once and this is what we get we get d phi by dz squared is equal to 2 times hyperbolic cosine of phi and we call that we are using the dimensionless variables now with an integration constant now we note that as uh, z tends to infinity phi tends to 0 and there is no variation in phi and therefore d phi by dz should tend to 0 as z tends to infinity and uh, where phi also tends to 0. Now to satisfy this boundary condition we must have c1 which should be equal to minus 2. So in this equation we get 2 times cosine hyperbolic phi and uh, so c1 is actually minus 2 and we can now use another identity that cosine phi, hyperbolic phi minus 1 is actually 2 times sine hyperbolic squared phi by 2 and therefore uh, this term on the right hand side is 4 times sine h squared phi by 2 okay so next uh, so these are the two terms that we are equating so this term and this term are equal to each other now uh, this uh, equation tells us that d 
d phi by dz is equal to plus or minus 2 sine hyperbolic phi by 2. So now we need to see whether we'll use the plus sign or the minus sign. So in our case, uh, we let's say if we have a negatively charged wall, then we know that phi is less than 0 and uh, we must uh, we have this negative zeta potential if we uh, plot phi versus z at least uh, if we without knowing the solution we know how the solution behaves for the low zeta potential case and uh, we've seen that and the potential actually increases from this negative zeta potential and goes to zero so actually d phi by d z is going to be positive and phi is negative so to ensure that uh, phi is negative while d phi by dz is positive we must have a negative sign so the physical equation is actually d phi by dz is equal to minus 2 sine hyperbolic phi by 2 okay so now we can solve this equation and uh, to solve this we'll just uh, do simple integration so we have d phi over 2 hyperbolic sine phi by 2 and we'll integrate from z equals to 0 where phi is z e zeta over kt because now we are looking at the dimensionless quantities and at a given value of z we'll say that the potential is phi so uh, <clears throat> to solve this integral let's uh, note this identity that the integral of dx over hyperbolic sine x is uh, logarithm of tan hyperbolic x by 2 plus an integration constant so this integral on the left hand side of this uh, equation actually becomes log of tan hyperbolic phi so because we have uh, the argument of sine hyperbolic is phi by 2 so we will now get uh, half of that so tan hyperbolic phi by 4 minus logarithm of tan hyperbolic z e zeta over 4 kt which is this lower limit and this is equal to minus z and we can now simplify uh, this uh, equation so first uh, we'll have log of tan hyperbolic phi over 4 over tan hyperbolic z e zeta over 4 kt and this is minus z and this implies that in dimensionless terms phi is equal to 4 times hyperbolic tan inverse e to power minus z times tan hyperbolic z e zeta over 4 kt okay and, and this is the solution uh, that we are actually looking for so uh, this is in dimensionless uh, terms so we can uh, re recalling that this is the uh, this is how we non-dimensionalized 
the variables so we can uh, now uh, write this uh, solution in terms of dimensionless quantities so we will get 5 is equal to 4 and the units of 5 are kt over z e and we have tan hyperbolic inverse of e to power minus z was uh, non dimensionalized by the characteristic uh, thickness of the EDL which was lambda d and this lambda d is same as the la uh, lambda uh, subscript d that we had in the case where we had linearized our uh, Poisson equation in the low zeta potential limit and finally tan hyperbolic z e zeta over 4 kt so this is uh, our final solution that we are looking for and this is the exact solution to the Poisson equation with Boltzmann distribution of the positive and negative ions and we'll, we can see that at z equals to 0 uh, we'll get potential which is zeta and as z tends to infinity phi tends to 0 and again roughly the solution of phi versus z would look something like this where you have zeta uh, potential is zeta at z equals to 0 and it asymptotically approaches to 0 as z tends to infinity and uh, once you know phi you can uh, also calculate the concentrations of ions from the Boltzmann distribution uh, using these uh, relation these equations